Thanks for coming to another Todd Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. What we're going to be talking about is the idea of pace in the classroom. We have various student abilities in our classrooms, depending upon how our, our the setup of our classroom is. But there are undoubtedly people that work at different paces. So some may go very fast through something, some may take a little bit longer to go through something, some may be in the right in the middle. But as a classroom teacher, managing all that can be quite challenging. What typically ends up happening is we set a deadline or a, an amount of time that we're going to spend on a lesson. And then we put students into this lesson and some will finish early and some will have difficulty finishing at all and some will finish right on time. And so the question becomes, if we want to, what do we do with these students that work at a quick pace? So to give you an idea about this, so students that are cognitively gifted tend to process things at a much quicker pace than your typical student. So for example, what you can see here is that this student, the gifted student, typically not all gifted students, but most gifted students, after hearing something six times, they, they understand it. They have shown mastery of it. It's been introduced to them. There is an, an activity that lets them apply it. They may be asked to evaluate or to, you know, uh, create something about it, but they got it after six times. Your regular ed to teach or student, it's going to take them twice as long. It's going to take them 12 times to understand. So they may need a little more work. They may need a little more activities. They may need a little more demonstration until they are going to gain mastery. And then special ed students, typically, not everyone, need to hear it 18 or more times before they're going to gain mastery. So as a teacher, it's a real struggle to try to, to get these pace kind of all on the same page. But the, the thing about it is, is you shouldn't get them all on the same page. If we're differentiating up, those students that move at a really quick pace, we should not be slowing them down. We should allow them to work at the pace that they work. Um, and, and then the question becomes, then what do we do with them? And so this is what it can feel like for a gifted student. This is a scene from the movies The Incredibles. And you have this character, Dash. He's obviously very skilled at running very fast. He starts the, the race and he starts out of the gates and he's way ahead of everyone else. But then he's asked to slow down and to be kind of, and so he slows down to the point where he lets everyone else pass him by. And then he's encouraged to go fast again and he runs at the last second and crosses the finish line in second place. And you can see at the very end, the other students are, have been pushed to their limits. They are winded. They are gasping for air. And Dash, on the other hand, doesn't seem like he even broke a sweat. And this is what it can feel very much like for a student that works at a quick pace is they get done with the work so quickly that they don't really, that, or they've had to slow down because they would normally work at such a quick pace. And as a result, they don't feel like they were really pushed. They were really challenged. And what, this can be a challenge for both the student and the teacher. The student, it becomes a, a challenge for the student because it, it's kind of, it can be really tough to have to slow yourself down and to go at a snail's pace when you can run at such a fast, a fast speed. For the teacher then, it's like, what do you do with this kid who finishes early? Because typically what happens is a teacher just gives the student more work, and more of the same work. So if you're a kid who's fairly smart and you finish early and your reward is that you're given more work what are you going to learn really quickly you're going to learn not to finish early because otherwise you're going to be punished with this extra work so to speak so we need to figure out ways to have productive things for students to do when they finish their work early when it comes to pacing and so um, it's, it's the difference between acceleration and enrichment. So acceleration is when they finish what they're doing, then let them move on to the next thing, and then let them move on to the next thing, and then let them move on to the next thing. And that's 
what we do a lot with our math students is we allow them to move at a quicker pace and they get ahead and then they're able to take math classes at a younger age because they have covered the material at a much quicker pace. But the other, the other side of that is the idea of enrichment, which is like, instead of moving on to the next thing and learning at a surface level at a fast pace, what if we dig down? What if we get a true understanding of what it is that we're learning? What if we really explore what that is? And this is the idea of enrichment. And this is what I'm gonna cover in this particular video. So when a student finishes their work earlier, what are ways that you can enrich that learning or their learning in general? So I'm gonna give you 10 suggestions for things that you can do when students finish early. And I'm gonna give you five don'ts that you do not wanna do uh, because it is not gonna grow them as a learner. So the first one is, one thing you could ask students to do is to reflect or improve upon what they've done. Sometimes kids do something for the sake of getting it done, not because they want it to be done well. And they need to go back and take a look. Kid, could you make that better? Could there be more quality? Could you have more examples? What could you have done better? I always tell my students when they're working on projects, you're never done with the project. You've just been given extra time to improve what you've already done. And so I try to get that mentality and that mindset with my students so that they know that they, it's not that they're finishing early, it's that they have finished at a, a pace uh, where they can now have time to work on going, you know, improving it and making it even better. We want students to be reflective. We want students to think about their work. We want students to, to come up with ways that they can challenge themselves and make the work better. The second piece of advice is let them explore deeper. So if they're learning, let's say about ecosystems and they learn the basics of ecosystems and how the producers and consumers and all that stuff works, could they kind of investigate like, uh, you know, an ecosystem in their own community or, or get a true a different understanding of different types of ecosystems depending upon where they are. So could that student kind of dig, dig down and really explore what different ecosystems look like rather than having the basics of what the ecosystem are, they have a true understanding so they can apply it to no matter what ecosystem is being presented to them. And it may be allow them to also come up with solutions if there's problems with an ecosystem. You know, what are ways that we can solve these issues with the ecosystem? The third thing is uh, to have them swap learning with another, what we call early finisher. So if two kids both finish early, you can have them compare what they learn because it's just a good way to have that conversation because one student may have picked up something the other didn't and they're able to share that with them and not only that but then the student has to figure out how to explain what they learned in a way that someone else can understand which shows true mastery so that's one thing you can do is have if you have a multiple early finishers have them kind of swap what they learned and, and what they got from it um, and that way they can learn from one another as well the fourth thing Let's say you're doing a math, you're doing a set of problems in math and the student finishes early. Could you then challenge that student to create their own math problems using the same, uh, you know, concept? Um, but how could they apply, like they can, maybe they can make a word problem or maybe they could make a problem for someone else to solve. So how can they then take it from the application of what they learn to creating something? Because again, you have to have complete understanding to be able to create something. If you're gonna write that problem, you have to understand how it works before you can write said problem. And so that's one thing you might wanna consider about is having them create their own um, problems or have them create their own activities. So if they, they're reading, they're, they're in the language arts class and they've, they've got what they need to know about prepositions, like could they do an activity like make a schoolhouse rock or watch the schoolhouse rock about prepositions and then make their own. So could they do an, an activity that takes it further? And this is an, this is an extra work. This is taking the work and going deeper, enriching yourself. It's not more of the same. The next one is they could improve the lesson. So put that challenge to your students like, look, you finished early, you got this done. What did you think of the lesson? How could I have made it better? So you kind of put yourself out there and you allow the student to, to give you some suggestions on how things might have gone better or how things could be done differently. And it allows you to get some feedback as teacher, but it also gives the, the space for your student to think about, to reflect, okay, this is what I learned. This is how I learned it. How could it have been done better? How could the students that maybe aren't moving at such a fast pace, how could we have 
scaffolded that up? Or how could we have gotten them to that point where they're getting, gaining understanding and mastery? The sixth thing is you could do an independent study or project. So let's say the student finishes it. So that the first five were about like going deeper into what they were already learning about. These next five are going to be about like, what can they do outside of that? If they, if they, you feel like they have a, a really good understanding and have gone into depth uh, about this particular topic. So doing an independent project that has nothing to do with what they were currently doing, or maybe it could have something to do. So there's a little bit of overlap here. So if a stu you student finishes and there's still a few days left, maybe the student could take on an independent project that has something to do with the, what they're learning, or could have something to do with the, the subject area that they're learning about. So if it's a history class, they may not, like, and they're learning about the, in the American Revolution, they could go into much more depth on an independent project, learning it, looking at something in the American Revolution, or they could just do an independent project about something in history in general. Maybe they have a passion for the medieval times, or they have a passion for uh, Mesopotamia, and they could they could do an independent project and create that. And there are tools in the under under the um, on the Gifted Guy website under uh, Teacher Resources, uh, actually, and, and it shows. Uh, gives a template for how to create a contract and a rubric and a calendar for doing independent projects. And there's a Todd talk on doing independent projects as well, if you want to learn more about that. Number seven is have them organize themselves. So they, they've got this, this, this moment where they can take a deep breath and not have to worry so much about doing the work. And can they then go back and organize themselves? Some gifted kids struggle with organization. So, could they go back and look at their notes and see if that they're organized? Could they go back and take a look at their work and see how to better organize it? Can they take a look at their desk, their book bag, their whatever? But we're teaching them this executive functioning skills of organizing themselves because that's a really important skill to have because when you're more organized, it's easier to do the work because you know where to put your hands on things that you need to get because you're organized. You know, you have those some gifted students or some advanced students are very scattered and they like, well, I did it, but I don't know where I put it. So they could, they could just work on their organization. An eighth thing that they could do is they could do bulletin board enrichment. So I had these around my classroom where if a stu student finished work early, they could over and get, go over to a bulletin board and get a Sudoku puzzle and work on that. Or they could find a Rebus puzzle. And these were designed to challenge their thinking. So it wasn't extra work. It was, and it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, mandated. It was voluntary. They could, if they finished early, they could go around and find a, a, something that interested them, whether it was a riddle or a cryptogram or something. I had these all over the room where students, if they finished their work early, could then go work on these and kind of exercise their brain and get them thinking a little more deeply. A ninth one is that if you have a, a, a like a mini maker space in your classroom, you could set up STEM projects that students can go over and work on. And the nice thing about these is student doesn't necessarily have to finish it in the time that's left. So they could work on it for a couple of days and then you move on to the next lesson and they finish that one early and then they have a day and they can work on the STEM pro or whatever. But having some ideas for STEM projects with STEM materials for them to, to be, be creative with the engineering design process and again, pushing their, their thinking, pushing their enrichment, that's what we want. Lastly, you might wanna uh, consider having board games that or, or games that allow kids to push their thinking. So kids a lot of times want to get on their computers and just play mindless games. But what if you created a repository of really of games online that will challenge student thinking? Um, or what if you have board games in your classroom, um, such as Blockus or Five Crowns or a, a game that is really going to push their cognitive thinking? And so if a fin student finishes early and they have another early finisher, they can play a game together. Or if you could have games that kids could play by themselves, um, you could have Rubik's, Rubik's Cubes around, you know, in your room. So that when kids finish, they can cognitively work on that. So the idea is not to give them more work, but it's to give them different work that is really going to push their thinking. That's the whole point of this is we want to differentiate up. We want to push that thinking. There are five activities that I commonly see in classrooms that you should not do. And I'm gonna explain why for each one of these. The first one is we should not give them, I've already said this a couple of times, you should not just give them more work. So if they do 20 problems and they finish, don't give them another 20 that are at the same level. That's not really pushing their thinking. That's not allowing them to be enriched. That's not allowing them to go deeper. So what if, in, what if instead 
you know, you had, you had maybe five problems that had to do with the next lesson, or you had them again, create problems of their own. So you're going to, you don't want to give them extra work because no one likes extra work. You're just going to give them work. That's going to allow them to expand what they've already learned rather than just keep doing what they already learned. That, that can be really tough for a gifted students have to do the same thing over and over and given more of it because they finish early. A second thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to um, have them help someone who is struggling. We do this a lot when we have this advanced student and they're finished and we have students over here struggling. Well, then just go help the struggling student. Well, the, the, the advanced student doesn't get anything out of that other than the, you know, the being a nice person and helping others, but they're not really getting any learning. We're not pushing their learning any. And that's the whole point is that we're going to be pushing their learning. So definitely don't put them with someone who is struggling unless the student comes to you or the advanced student comes to you and says, hey, I'd be more than willing to help some people. Uh, you can certainly allow them to do that if that's something that they're passionate about. But we should definitely not stick them to, with someone who is struggling just for the sake of getting the kid caught up and just for the sake of filling time for the student that has things done. And that's just not a good formula to have. The third thing is we don't want to give them class tasks or the teacher helper. Again, these are, these are mundane things that do not really teach you anything. So going around and picking up trash from, from the floor or going over and organizing a bookcase or going over and making sure that, you know, the lunch totes are put away correctly. This is not teaching the student anything. It's not taking them deeper. Um, they're organizing their own stuff. That's a different story. They're learning how to organize their own stuff. But when you have them do tasks for you or make them, make them the teacher helper, they're not really getting anything out of that cognitively. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to give them tasks like having them color or having them do crossword puzzle, or word searches. Those things don't really push thinking. I mean, coloring, sure, it can be, now if it, it, it can be creative, they can color whatever, but still, when, when students are coloring something in, they're not really thinking. Uh, we want them to be thinking. We want to give them act. So if you're going to have those enrichment bulletin boards, you need to have activities that are going to push their thinking, not things that are simply for busy work. And coloring pages and word searches tend to be busy work where the student's not really getting anything out of that other than having their time occupied. They may want to do it for stress reasons or, you know, art therapy reasons, but just to do it for the sake of doing it is not really going to push their thinking. This last one's going to be a bit controversial, but a lot of times what we do with gifted students or advanced students when they finish work early is we say, well, just find something to read. And they're reading and that is pushing their thinking and whatnot. But again, what we don't want to do is we don't want to create a culture where kids love to read. So they whiz through their work really quick to get to the reading. This is what I did when I was in school. I would get through, I would do all the work really quickly and then I would have time to read because that's what I really want to do. That was my motive. So we don't want to set up that situation in a classroom. We want to make sure that we go through those, those one through five first. We, you know, pushing it deeper, you know, trying to find other ways to do things, reflecting, um, creating. We want them to do those things first before we simply say, oh, just read a book. Um, because that reading of the book is not, again, is not going to improve them as a learner when it comes to the task that they were doing. It's just going to give them, you know, something to read. So when it comes to pace, my suggestion is to let students work at their own pace. Don't try to slow them down and then have things for them to do if they finish early. And this is not just going to be your gifted kids. There's going to be other kids that finish early as well. And so what do you have for them to do that is going to enrich them, that is going to challenge them, that is going to push their thinking?